Welcome to another episode of Comedy Wham Presents, The Past, with me, your host, Valerie, and brought to you by David Thomas. ComedyWham.com is your place to go for features about all Austin comedy. David and I started this project earlier this year. I love interviewing funny people, and he loves writing about them. We'll be bringing you podcasts featuring the best in Austin comedy in all its shapes and formats. I'll be doing these interviews in two parts, the past and the current. Consider these bite-sized ways for you to get to know the folks that make the Austin comedy scene one of the best in the country. And now, the past with our guest, Daniel Webb. Hey. hey welcome. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yes. Happy and I, to be here. I guess we have a third guest, technically, sure. who's making her <laughs> presence known. The gatekeeper. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, let's start by breaking the ice, and I'd like you to tell me to, um, or I'd like you to tell me one word that you could use to describe your past. One word to describe my past. Um, That's a tricky question. Um, I would probably just say lucky. Yeah? I think pretty lucky. Yeah. Um, I had... I have really good supportive parents, Mm -hmm. and they, you know, like, I'm going to drop out of college and be a musician drag queen, and, you know, (laughs) uh, and I've seen a lot of the world. They took us a lot of places, and I feel like artistically stuff I've done have just been very supported Uh by people I know, and not that it's easy or that I have everything I want, but I I think as far as where I am, I am today or whatever is just been pretty dang yeah. lucky. Well, it's interesting. I, I wasn't necessarily expecting to hear the support because we found out yesterday that we both come from the <laughs> one of the most conservative pockets of the of the state. Absolutely, eight one seven. Strangely proud of it. I am strangely proud. Uh, but yeah, it was a desperate, a desperate yeah. to get out of that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's weird because I, you know, used to want to just get out of Texas mm-hmm. because of that and yeah. that, you know, the kind of growing up in that environment mm-hmm. and stuff in the eighties and nineties. Um, but then you get Texas pride and like all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I think I want to claim Dallas Fort Worth, yeah. which I would not have said <laughs> 10, 20 years yeah. ago. Yeah. So were you, you were raised up in the Dallas Fort Worth area? Correct. Okay. So we're in like the mid cities, uh-huh. just that suburban yeah. sprawl car dealerships and, you know, just strip yeah. malls and yeah. not a lot of, not a lot of uh, uniqueness. Right. Right. Um, and pretty conservative mm-hmm. still very much yeah. so. Yeah. And it's, it's an interesting part because I, w- w- I work at a job that gets a lot of, um, really international guests but mainly a lot of Texas guests. Mm-hmm. And I can look at somebody and totally tell when they're from Fort Worth, Texas. Really? I don't even have to talk to them. Wow. I can just see it. Is it the button down polo? It's everything, you <laughs> the know. The big hair exactly. for the ladies? <laughs> and there's a the thing that the ladies do. It's top to bottom. It's, it's, there's, there's, um, they just, there's the earrings to the makeup to the shirt tucked in. Yeah. There's a lot of coordination, mm-hmm. good or bad. Yeah. I'm not saying they're stylish, <laughs> but they're, they're, coordinated yeah and there's just something about that look that's yeah. very fort worth mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. not dallas to to be uh, divisive yeah both have big hair yeah, that's true <laughs> <laughs> both though. but yeah it's a, it's an interesting part mm-hmm. it's there's too much concrete up there like do you remember in the yes. summer the sky wouldn't be blue it would just be gray yeah. hazy uh-huh. that's disheartening <laughs> <laughs> it that, is. that hurt my feelings no. <laughs> Did you, did you have an early uh, interest in comedy? Um, now it seems glaringly obvious, but back then it would just be like, as a teenager, I would watch, um, like Margaret Cho and Wendy Liebman and Janine Garofalo like crazy. Uh And, um, I loved Lucille Ball Mm. and like loved the Carol Burnett show. And would go watch that with my grandparents. Like my sister went to like a kind of Christian summer camp, uh-huh. and I would go watch like I Love Lucy with my grandparents. You uh-huh. know what I mean? <laughs> um, and there is a really amazing memory of my mom being like, "I know it's your bedtime, but I want you to watch this." And it was a Gallagher special. Oh my god! Like uh, you remember, like you had to turn the yes. dial down to the fuzzy stations. Mm-hmm. It was on like the fuzzy station. <laughs> And she made me watch a Gallagher special. Wow. And not that that like changed my life or anything, yeah. but yeah. 
I I definitely loved watching stand up uh-huh. mainly because I think I liked the female performers and generally speaking they usually make me laugh like out loud uh-huh. a little more like I was a huge Roseanne fan the sitcom yeah um, and didn't really get into her stand up till way later mm-hmm. but those influences are just glaringly obvious now um, but I think that was just as a spectator for sure yeah but I was all music 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 mm-hmm. then. Um, I kind of wanted to be an actor, but I think I just didn't know how to funnel my need for attention. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but was quickly not interested in like saying other people's words. So you said you were were funneling your interests in music? Yes. I've been fortunate enough. They threw me in piano lessons when I was four and hated it, hated it, hated <laughs> it, and then quit when I was like 12. But then, like, a year later, just decided to start writing stuff and trying to develop a style. Mm -hmm. And then just kind of rolled with that for, I don't know, 15 years. So when my kid, at probably a similar age, says, I'm done, Mom, I can have him talk to you? Totally. Because it's... It is one of those things where you'll be like in my 20s, all of a sudden I was like, man, thank God I can do this Mm -hmm. because I could just sit down and play. And that is like a true blessing. Like that's just very fortunate to have that language. Mm -hmm. Um, And I mean, it's uh, it's boring. When I play music, it like clears the room. Really? Like, oh, yeah. When I used to play out, like even the bartender would take a cigarette break because everybody left. <laughs> so if he wants to make money, he might need to talk to somebody else. But if you just want him to get it like under his belt, I'll yeah. talk to the boy. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> so you, you watch this, the, the comedy stuff. You're channeling energy into music. You thought you might want to be an actor. How did you get into actual comedy performance? Um, there is a national show called the Encyclopedia Show, and they have like chapters. And so they brought it, I think it started in Chicago. I could be wrong. Okay. But it, there's a Seattle chapter, and then they finally brought one to Austin, hosted and curated by Mike Grotman and Ralphie Hardesty. Okay. And through them, I met a bunch. Of, that's where I met Katie Pingra. I met Caitlin Wood. I met the Betsy Boots McCann. They were all performers. Okay. LaShonda Lester, that's the huh. first time I met her. I met a lot of people through that. And they they finally tapped me to write. You basically have an assignment, and you have to write a 10-minute factual presentation on it, um, encyclopedia kind of thing, Yeah. Um, with a tinge of funny. And I I did one, and it was pretty well received um and then mike grotman i did it there was the austin storytellers slam ass Uh, and again they had like a theme it was curated by mike Uh grotman and i did that just a couple times and he pulled me aside and said you should do stand up and then ralph actually pulled me aside after that was like you should try stand up and Mm -hmm. I think as competitive as comedy is and, or could be, mm-hmm. um, I took their word for a lot of value just because I, they would not have to go out of their way to say that. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. There's no benefit to them. Um, and that just, that was kind of all I needed. Mm-hmm. I'd already thought about, cause I was in bands and like one, they all kind of dissolved at the same time. So then I was just kind of left with like nothing to do yeah. creatively. And that just really filled in that blank mm-hmm. kind of at the right time. Yeah. Cause I'm 30, I'll be 34 in a month. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. There's a lot of people who are 19, 20, 21 doing stand up. They've got yeah. 13, 14 years on me, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so but they don't have the wisdom. Daniel. Thank you. They thank don't. you. I do have gray <laughs> in my beard. Thank you. I appreciate that. But they also, it's, I already see the generational disconnect and just the references and the things that like they're all talking about. Uh Well, we've missed a big step. How did you get from the the conservative Mecca of (laughs) Dallas, Fort Worth down to Austin? Um, I actually leapt. I, uh, I got into the UT provisional program, which is like, you almost got accepted, yeah. but not quite. So yeah. then they throw you into the, and it's really meant to weed people like me out, <laughs> you know, like I'm totally one of the people that didn't survive that. Uh. But basically I graduated high school and two weeks later was in Austin, Texas in college Whoa. and, it, you know, sank like a stone, oh. but it was a great time. Yeah. Um, and then just kind of community college, I was trying to do solo piano shows around town and 
just kind of fuddled with that, yeah. trying to be an Austin musician. This was in the year 2000. So, you know, you would, it was still like you had to burn CDs. There wasn't yeah. like the internet necessarily. And it was, you know, that was my goal. Mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to be George Winston, mm -hmm. even though George Winston already has that gig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need another one. <laughs> but that was it. And then I, I moved back home for just a couple of months when I failed miserably at school, but then just came right back to Austin yeah. to try to, like everybody, be a musician. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody thought they were the next Led Zeppelin or whatever. Yeah. So, but that was it. I thought I'll just wait till somebody spots me here and then that'll be my ticket. Mm -hmm. And then you just kind of, irresponsibly wait for that to happen. Yeah. And that's not how things work <laughs> <laughs> at all. How, how long between the time that you landed in Austin and that conversation with Ralph? I mean, this is kind of technically hardcore my fourth year in stand up. Okay. And I think it was right when I was 29 or 30 and I moved to Austin, I was 18, so 12 years. Wow. Like, I, I gave music a fair shot. Yeah, for I, sure. I really tried. Um, but it was, I, that's what I think about the, like, stand up. If I ever have, like, an introduction, I, mm -hmm. I'm always like, ladies and gentlemen, in one last final attempt, <laughs> please welcome <laughs> Daniel oh, West. No. <laughs> so the way that I'm, I'm hearing your story is, and, you know, you've, you've, You've thrown out the, well, I'm comparing myself to these kids that are 19, 20. As a musician, you know the hooks and the ways that you get your audience. So even though you might not have been doing the, the comedy, the pure comedy for these past 10, 12 years, you know how to bring in an audience. Thank you. Um, I think I have the benefit of like rhythm. Mm -hmm. I definitely yes. think I've got that strength mm -hmm. um and i also like i said i go way back you know i'm a huge jack benny fan mm. you know i love phyllis diller yeah and like burns and allen kind of stuff i go way back yeah. and that's so corny but it's just joke 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 it's mm -hmm. not this like vast storytelling yeah. setup thing and i also think that's to my benefit because i don't think these young people are even entertained with like a Jack Benny radio show from 1938. Yeah. Like, I just don't think they're going to. You got to say you're the first person <laughs> to drop the Jack Benny name. Reference. I'm a huge fan. He's so funny, <laughs> very funny stuff. And it honestly is vulgar as I am. It, it's that stuff that I didn't, the funniness of being clean, yeah. tiptoeing around what's, obvious you know what i mean yeah. it's there yeah. you know what i mean the concept of like vulgar things are there but the hilariousness of being you know kind of light around yeah. it in those times is funny yeah you know what i mean it's not just that we can't say it it's right. we're not going to say it and that's funny mm -hmm. yeah. um i didn't pick that up at all i'll just say every terrible dirty word i could think of <laughs> this is not a g-rated podcast by Thank the way you. so you can I'm let just loose to, if you want i don't want to come out of the gate just <laughs> flying <laughs> stay tuned for the second yeah. <laughs> podcast and daniel will just unleash it all definitely <laughs> <laughs> well one of my questions is how did you fall into your particular style and you you've just alluded to the the quick snap uh, and the rhythm of of short jokes is that for sure is that how you would describe your style Oh yeah. Uh, the, I've also seen a lot of stand up, just kind of not before I did stand up. Like yeah. I've seen a lot of good professional live performers mm -hmm. and I just, music included, I love when somebody just walks in and just takes control yeah. and doesn't make the audience do anything for the show to be good. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't like call and response. I don't like, you know, belittling people or berating an audience if they don't like what I'm saying. I'm like, mm -hmm. just keep moving. Give them this, 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 this. Give them so much to choose from that yeah. they'll find something to like. Yeah. But, I mean, I did... I saw Joan Rivers three times live. And I saw her three months before she died. Oh. And you can't imagine the the shit she was saying and the speed she was saying it was just mm -hmm. like this steamroller yeah. coming in and it was just one of those like i don't have to do anything i'm just gonna sit back and watch this show yeah and i think people respond energetically to that yeah. and so i kind of try to do some of the same things so funny that you chose the word steamroller because before <laughs> you started talking about seeing joan 
I was thinking, I just got to see you perform back at the comedy seance this past last year. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that experience was like hopping on a train and just following you wherever you took. And it didn't, I didn't have to wait for the slow build. I would, you, you said, give me your ticket. Let's go. We're going now. Thank, thank Full you. speed ahead. Yeah. I love that. Like, uh, like a band. If I'm watching a band and they just go and just song, 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 and they yeah. just blow through it so that you're just kind of absorbed in yeah. it as opposed to, you know, you can lose a lot of energy mm-hmm. in between, like the audience. Yeah. Yeah. Like, have you ever seen the Flaming Lips live? No. Phenomenal show. But the lead singer talks for like five or ten minutes in oh. between. It's all the time. And you just lose this built yeah. up energy that they created. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they are so dynamic that they can get you back. Right. But there's too much of a lull. And I think even in comedy, too, it's like, I don't know. I, even after like a Joan Rivers concert, like an hour in, I'm like, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> Super tired. <laughs> Um, but I think, I think audiences uh, unconsciously like that. Yeah. And I, and that's kind of my not secret weapon. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> super high energy from, from you. And Thank you. And well, I was also dead Selena. So I was well, really well, trying to sell that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and you so did. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but then I did see you do traditional. And it was similar. It, you know, I, I know I pointed to that as my first time to see you, but when I did see you perform just, you know, straight, straight up comedy set, it was the same experience. It's like, okay, hop on. Let's it's going to be fast paced and high energy. And sometimes high energy is really annoying. Correct. But no, not your style. I struggle with that if I'm doing like a 30, 35 minute set. Mm-hmm. I'm like, how long can people listen to this yeah. screech at this? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, cause it create, it can create a fatigue mm-hmm. for sure. Um, and I, I can't remember the guy's name. This is so terrible. I think Tony something. He's a, a pretty famous. He's been a comedian for like 20, 30 years. Very gay. Fast, 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 fast. Yeah. Sippy, 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 uh-huh. sippy. And it's like, I can only watch like, a few minutes of him Mm -hmm. and it's just too much. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's like a, like a rabid animal in your face. So I definitely don't (laughs) want to be that. Yeah. I definitely want to try and be still likable when Uh I'm done and not just to thank God he's over. (laughs) Um, if I host, sometimes I think that happens. Yeah. Here she comes again. (laughs) Back on stage. You know, I think there's a little bit of a drawback on that level. (laughs) Oh, Cool. Let me see. Okay. Um, so we talked, well, we, I guess we technically talked about your very first experience with comedy. True. Um, and this is one of those questions we talked uh, off mic that because of your broad range as a performer, I didn't want you to think that you could only talk about stand up comedy, but did you consciously make a decision about stand up versus improv versus sketch versus whatever else is out there absolutely um i am not a snob about any of that stuff Mm -hmm. i I think that they all make me laugh but from i'm improv i'm just not that good at Mm -hmm. and i like to have a plan Mm -hmm. i also very much music the same as like i want to write my own music like i want to be like kind of bitchy about that you know And really with like stand up, it was like, I'm old. I should, I want to choose the things I want to say and yeah. I, with a, with a purpose kind of a mm-hmm. thing. And I, I really felt like that would be the only thing. Also, I swore when all my bands broke up that I would never join another band again. Uh-huh. And just improv, troop work, yeah. all that kind of stuff involves group work. Yeah. And I've just kind of sworn it off because <laughs> I, I sailed those ships yeah. and I'm, I'm solo. Yeah. Yeah, that's the wisdom that you have. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep calling me am smart. I, am I, I doing a good job? You're doing great. I feel great. No, I feel great. <laughs> <It's> fabulous. Mm. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Uh, let's see. Do you, do you have any fears about being a comic? Um, I am constantly afraid of not being able to think of new stuff. Mm. And I think that's pretty pervasive with mm-hmm. everybody. Um, I like hosting makes me nervous mm-hmm. because I don't like, um, I don't want to ruin somebody else's show. You know what I mean? I feel like if I'm just sure. performing, I can do what I want, but I don't want to spoil yeah. the mood or whatever. Um, 
I also fear that this is kind of my last, like, true creative endeavor to try to make a living um, off of. Yeah. And other than that, it's like, fuck, I have to be a flight attendant. or You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, no disrespect. Uh, but this is sort of the, like, I say, in a one final <laughs> attempt. Uh, so that is my fear, because I am kind of putting all my eggs in this yeah. basket. And, um, and I mean, it's fun, you know what I mean? And everybody's running their own race. So mm-hmm. I don't feel like I'm, we're all taking a, a gamble. Yeah. But I dropped out of college like 10 years ago, so it was too late yeah. already, mm-hmm. you know, but... This is it. If this doesn't work, we're moving to Iceland and calling it a day. So, <laughs> Iceland of oh, all the yeah. places. Got to go. Got to <laughs> well, go. All right. <laughs> um, do you feel, it sounds like from that answer that the answer to this next question might be no, but I don't want to bias you, <laughs> even though I just did. <laughs> I would make a really good pollster. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I want the answer to be yes, okay. because you're awesome. Thank you. When would you say things have clicked for you that this is where you need to be? Um, I have been really fortunate to have had a lot of positive feedback early on. Mm-hmm. So that gave me the gusto to keep working at it and not just kind of make it a hobby that I could actually pursue it. Yeah. Um, I think that one of the better tests, I mean, Austin, Texas is Austin, Texas. It is not a real city. You know what I mean? Thinking everything. It's like you go to Dallas, you go to Houston. If you want to try and make like common people laugh, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, sure. this is a very comedy open-minded friendly. Mm-hmm. comedy friendly city. Um, but I, early on I was, like I say, just got a lot of good feedback Mm -hmm. and I I won't name names, but there were some people who like, you know, wouldn't speak, wouldn't book me. And Mm. I took that as a really good sign that they were scared of me. Mm. Um, and so I, that I think is, um, a fuel kind of a thing. Yeah. I was going to say, does that, yeah, does that fuel you to overcome those things or scare you? Um, I comedy especially rejection helps inspire. Absolutely. Getting like rejected is like, oh yeah. <laughs> Whereas like musically it just kind of felt like, well, maybe I should just stay home. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like comedy, I'm like, cause you get to say whatever you want. You right. can say whatever you want if you're, if you're stacking it the right way. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel like that's, I was in Iceland as a matter of fact. Huh. And we were just talking about Texas politics, and this was two years ago. So I was like, yeah, it's illegal, basically, to be gay in Texas. I mean, it's illegal to try to marry somebody that you Mm -hmm. love. And the Icelanders, I was at a lovely dinner, and they're like, why do you even stay? I was like, because I want to be this middle finger (laughs) in the middle of everything. They're like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. And that's kind of the best Uh use of the art form yeah i mean historically you know what i mean it's just to call people out and i you know the the times they are are changing you know what i mean and texas is one of the last holds yeah of like some negative thinking yeah can we use that as a tease because we're going to talk about the national <laughs> fuck yeah. you that you you gave and we're i want to talk about that in our second for podcast. sure no problem uh I'm going to I'm going to call that a, a the past. Okay. And that is a wrap on Comedy Wham presents the past with our guest, the lovely Daniel Webb. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Do you want to tell us where to find you on social media or the web? No problem. Um my website is thedanielwebb.com. Uh on Twitter I'm Ruben Boobies because I was an idiot and just <laughs> juvenilely like picked that never thinking that it would be anything and now i can't change it like you can't change your handle without losing all of your right. stuff so i'm there i'm very boring on instagram i won't i won't mention that <laughs> i went through a twitter handle change a few years ago and i didn't have to change really yeah we'll the, talk about that offline okay. all right but yeah well, Roseanne Barr used to be my twitter friend and she dumped me which is oh. fine but i don't want to lose all those those like yeah. online contacts. So, right. okay, maybe right. we'll have a technical yeah. conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Everyone listen to part two for more information about what Daniel's up to today You and that awesome tease that we left. You have been listening to Comedy Wham Presents, the past hosted by me, Valerie, and brought to you by David Thomas. And be sure to visit ComedyWham.com and give a follow on Twitter at ComedyWham. I'm Valerie, and that's been funny. <laughs>